There's a promotion. There's a blessing that comes upon you when you fast. Many of you are going to get a promotion this year because of what you've done right now. Many of you are going to sell a piece of property you couldn't sell if your life depended on it. But it's the blessing and promotion of God. Break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. And many of you are fasting, as I am fasting. And when you fast, you become very sensitive to the things around you. You actually begin to enter into a real honeymoon where you don't want food. Honestly, you don't want to eat. But as you begin to pray, you hear very clearly the Word of God. And this is a time of great spiritual warfare. There are many forces that are anti-Christian, anti-God, that want to destroy every Christian. They don't care what denomination. They put them all in the same basket and they're against them all. But we have to stand against abortion. We have to stand against the homosexual agenda. We have to pray for our president because there are forces that want to destroy him. They want to destroy him because he stands against socialism. Every place that socialism has, in, has been in power, the church has been handcuffed. It's a very anti-God a way of government. But God has to have people who stand and pray. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 4, says, The angel placed a mark on those who sighed and cried for the peace of Jerusalem. That word mark is T-A-U, and it is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which is the form of a cross. And God knew exactly what this meant. It was a picture of what was coming, the power of the cross God placed upon those. And when you fast, when you fast for 21 days, when you begin a part of your uh, weekly discipline before God, God places a mark right on your forehead. It's a mark of power. It's a mark of authority. It's a mark of warfare. You become a, a mark where angels are attracted to. And today, I encourage you to begin to fast. I have the book entitled A Daily Guide to Miracles I want to send to you. This will encourage you. This will help you to fast. It will be a blessing to you. The website is right there, Bob Rogers Ministries, or you can call that number. And we'll be glad to send it to you. It costs us about $10 to print this book and to send it to you. So I'm asking you to send a generous gift. And that generous gift will not only pay for the book, but it will help spread the gospel. And we are spreading the gospel in the Middle East, right in the midst of where everything's happening. We are taking the gospel. There we have a television station in Bethlehem. And it is doing a tremendous work. So your gifts help make all this possible. Right now, I want to take you into our services where I'm sharing about the power of fasting. So now here's, here's Paul. He, his life, his discipline is through prayer and fasting and giving and faith. And you read about him in Acts 13. I want to read the story. Now, there was at the church at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Serene. Those three men were prophets. And Manian, which had been brought up by Herod the Tatriarch, and Saul, these two were teachers. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And a prophetic word came and said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, there's a prophet, and a teacher, for the work I've called them to do. So while they're fasting, they're fasting, there's five of them, they're fasting, God speaks to them. I've never been on a fast that God didn't speak to me. A prophetic word comes. I've got a job for them to do. So then the Bible says in verse 3, And when they had fasted and prayed, now they go on another fast. And by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, this is a 40-day fast. 
So they're fasting now for 40 days and God begins to speak to them. God begins to equip them. And so as they go forth, you read in the 14th chapter and in the 15th chapter, what happens? They come to a place and they're starting churches and there's a riot. And the Bible says many people held to the, held to the, the multitude, but others held to the apostles. In the chapter before, before they fasted, they were teachers and there was a prophet, but now they're apostles. There's a promotion, there's a blessing that comes upon you when you fast. Many of you are going to get a promotion this year because of what you've done right now. Many of you are going to sell a piece of property you couldn't sell if your life depended on it. But it's the blessing and promotion of God. So it becomes a part of his lifestyle. Now I want to share with you three things that fasting cannot do. They cannot do. Number one, fasting cannot change something wrong and make it right. I had a guy one time, and he was fasting that something would happen to his wife. She's got to die sometime, Lord. Let her pass so I can, I can marry somebody else. He already had her picked out, too. I asked God to let me backslide just for 24 hours so I could deal with that guy. But God's not going to honor that type of fasting. God's not going to honor a fast. God, get, get, get even with them. God, smite them. If you're just mad at them and got anger in your heart, this is time you need to get rid of all that. In the Bible, there's a story of David. David committed adultery with Bathsheba. She got pregnant. So he had her husband killed. And then when she had the baby, the baby got sick. So David fasted seven days that the baby would live. At the end of that, the baby died. And God spoke to him. Said, I'm not going to reward your prayer. I'm not going to reward your fasting because of the evil you have done. But I'm going to have mercy on you. And I'm, I'll give you another son. And the other son became Solomon. And so God totally closed that chapter of his sin. God totally forgave him of that sin as he humbled himself. But God will not, he will not change something wrong and make it right. Secondly, fasting is not a substitute for any commandments or directions. Now, when you fast, you don't feel as good. You're hungry. You're, you're kind of agitated. So a lot of times you're quick-tempered. A lot of times you can't put up with a lot of stuff you normally put up with. You're more sensitive to just foolishness. And so you can become dangerous. Dangerous to be around. Mark says, Landon, never, don't pay attention to him. He's fasting. You know, he can get mean when he fasts. Well, just because you fast, it's not all right to be get mean. It's, all, it's not all right to say something mean and hateful and dirty. We don't do that. We... we we don't feel as well. But fasting does not make God overlook sins in your life. You repent. You ask God to help you and cleanse you in Jesus' name. And then fasting cannot change God's will for your life. I remember when God called me to preach. I didn't want to preach. And God kept dealing with me and dealing with me. And I went up into the mountains of eastern Kentucky. I went over into Stearns, Tennessee. There's a south fork of the Cumberland River. It eventually ends in the Cumberland Falls. And there, along an old logging road, I put a tent up. And I stayed for three days. I didn't eat. I had a bunch of water with me. I drank that water and I prayed. I read the Bible. And I said, God, I don't want to preach. And I'm fasting, so you won't call me to preach. God didn't answer that prayer. But you know what God did? God changed me. When I came out of there, I wanted to preach. There was a humbling. When Jesus, when Jesus served, was served the Last Supper, and he ate that meal, he said, Now look, the next meal I eat with you, it'll be in paradise. So he hadn't eaten in 2,000 years. He's been on this fast, so what happens? He, gets, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, he's not eating. He's in this fast. 
And he says, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup, I, I know what's going, what's going to happen. I don't want to go through this. Let this cup pass from me. What am I saying? God is not going to change his will for your life. And if you just fast so you don't have to do something God's telling you to do, God's not going to do that. But you know what? God changed Jesus' heart. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And so fasting, there are things that fasting cannot do. But let me tell you why we are fasting. We are fasting because we are engaged in a great spiritual war. There's a war over your children. There's a war over your family. There's a war over this nation. And God's looking for people that will rise up and come against the demons of hell. This anti-God spirit that's gotten a hold of our nation, that's gotten a hold of our schools, where you can't even mention the name of Jesus, that have gotten into our government, into our nation, where you couldn't even call it Christmas four years ago until President Trump came in and he said, we're going to change it. This is Christmas, not holiday seasons. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap for that. It's a spirit that has taken control of our media, of our colleges, of our universities, and especially of politics. So these leaders come up, they're, they're uh, anti, anti God, anti church, anti same. They're, they're for same sex marriage. When Target came out, and they had these unisex bathrooms because of the the uh, um, same sex marriage and all this other garbage, I quit going to Target. I didn't go to Target for three years, and let me tell you, I didn't play a little pray a little lay me down to sleep prayer for Target. I pray they'll lose money. I pray you'll punish them for this sin and this evil and this wickedness. And I tell you that first quarter they lost $15 million. And when they changed the bathrooms I went back to Target. I'm here to tell you we have to stand against wickedness. We have to pray against it. We have to bind it in the name of Jesus. And not just not just the sin, but the representatives that hell has raised up that waved the flag of homosexuality in politics, that raised the flag of same-sex marriage, that waved the flag of abortion. Listen, I, I can't pray in public how I pray behind closed doors in my spiritual warfare because if they're against pro-life, I'm against them. If, if they are trying to cram down the homosexual agenda down my throat, I'm against them. I won't stand with them one second in Jesus' name. In West Africa, there were a thousand witches and um, witch doctors. They got together and they entered into a 40-day fast against the church. We're going to destroy the church. We're going to destroy their pastors. We're going to come against them. And so the church, they called this meeting of pastors, and there were three pastors that fasted for three days. Now look, over here is the enemy on a 40-day fast, and over here are some wimpy little fellows that say, well, we're going to fast three days. Come on. you got to get in the same class. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna climb in that ring, buddy, you better be prepared and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are our weapons? They're prayer, they're faith, they're fasting, they're praise and worship. That's what our weapons are. I'll tell you that year, this pastor told me, he said that year, we had more churches fail. We had pastor after pastor that fell into adultery. One of our largest churches, that pastor's kids, the son became so wicked that there was a missionary that came and, and the pastor told the missionary, please don't leave any money in, the, in your room. He said, I, I apologize, but my son is a thief. Folks, we're in a war. 
And not everybody's going to be a fighter, but God's called you. God's placed a mark on you to stand against wickedness and evil. We're the salt of the earth in Jesus' name. And then we fast because fasting releases spiritual gifts that bring victory. Did you know when Peter got up on the day of Pentecost, he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. He, he, he talked about the spiritual gift that God anointed Joel, Joel with, and he began to say, listen, be encouraged, because those gifts that he talked about, God's releasing upon us. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Every mother in this church, every grandmother in this church needs the gift of prophecy. And during this fast, I want you to pray for it. I want you to pray that God will give you the anointing to prophesy and you are to prophesy over your children. You are to prophesy over your sons and your daughters and your grandchildren. I was talking to a fellow the other day. He's in trouble. And I was praying with him and talking to him. And I said, you know, I believe God's got a call in your life. Well, my grandmother, she told me that when I was eight years old. She told me that God had a plan for my life. That grandmother prophesied over that boy and he couldn't get away from it even though he was in his 30s. He couldn't get away from it. Mama, if you'll begin to declare it over your family, they'll never get away from it. They may run from it. They may hide from it. But in the day of trouble, it jumps up right in front of them. It rings loud in their ears. Your words, the word of God that comes to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lord. I had to go to school. At, I went to Fern Creek High School. They were on double sessions. I had to get up 5.30. I had to catch my bus about 6.20. I was eating breakfast at 6. And my mother would get up. She'd get up. I walk in there, and there's the post toasties and milk and my mother. She had the Bible open, and I'd sit there eating. She would be reading. She said, when I don't like what I see in your eyes. I said, you can't see anything in my eyes. She said, the eyes are the windows of the soul. I can tell you're up to no good. I want you to know I've sent angels, and I bound it in the name of Jesus. So I can hear her right now. How can you sin when those kind of angels are with you everywhere you go? Oh, the prayers of Mama. Oh, your prayers, Mama. Your words are prophetic words. It comes as you'll fast. Ask God. He'll loose it upon you. Then fasting releases the power of God. God's power is greater than the devil. God's power is with you. God's power has anointed you. Fasting has been practiced by almost every people group from antiquity. At first, people begin to fast against demons. And if you'll notice in the Catholic Church, they do the sign of the cross and their type of fasting. All of that was a knee jerk against the demonic. There was a very godly, righteous priest when he would come to demon possession and they would make the sign of the cross because they knew the power and victory of the cross. And so fasting, that's how it really was with many people. And then when someone would die from some uh, sickness or some a violent death, the family would call a fast. So that evil spirit would be broken and no one else in their family would be fast. It goes back to the people of Gibeon who went and got the body of Saul and then they fasted seven days that that spirit would be broken off of Israel. And then it became the custom of almost every religion. The Hindus, they fast. They fast that their consciousness will rise to a higher level. The Muslim fast for direction and guidance and to get control of their spirits. The Hindus and the, the, the Buddhists, they fast to guard and control their spirits that will rise uh, higher. The American Indians fasted. They fasted so they could be sensitive to dreams and visions. The win, women of the Barbos Islands, they fast when their males go to war. The Indians of the Newfoundland Sound fast when their Husbands go hunting or when they go on whaling expeditions. Jonathan Edwards, who was a part of the great awakening in our country, God gave him a word. His sinners in the hands of an angry God. Every time he preached it, hundreds and hundreds got saved. He never would preach it. 
without fasting for three days. Uh, John Wesley fasted. Jerome, who translated the Bible into the Latin, it's called the Vulgate, he fasted the whole time and would only eat a small piece of bread and drink a small amount of, ju of juice. And he did it until the Vulgate was translated and the word was translated. Martin Luther, he fasted so much that they thought he would literally die on two occasions because in long fasts. Hippocrates, he is where the doctors take the Hippocratic Oath. And those days, they would hire doctors to poison you and to kill you. And so he would not do that. And he made doctors take an oath that their life would be to save lives and not to take lives. He advocated fasting. And he said it would bring a cure to many diseases. The Russian doctors have probably done more research in medical studies on fasting, and they recommend up to 30-day fast. And a three-day fast of water only, they say, will kill many types of cancers. In the times of Jonah, Jonah went to Nineveh, and they called for a fast. And as they fasted, it spared the judgment of God. And then God spoke to him in in the book of Jonah 4.11 and said, because you fasted, I've not only saved the people, but I've saved the cattle. God's interested in your little pet dog and your kitty cat. And he said, I I'm going to spare the cattle because you fasted. I went to North Dakota to preach and I got a call from a pastor in South Dakota. It was about 120 miles. And he said, would you come down to our, our town? He picked me up at the airport. He drove me there, and it was by the Red Rock Indian Reservation. That's where Setting Bull was killed, and the Sioux Indian Reservation. And I met there with the mayor. I met there with the leaders of that city. I met there with uh, the one chief from the Sioux Indians whose great-great-grandfather was Setting Bull's brother, and he claims he was the one that killed General Custer. But they said to me, Pastor, we read your book, The 21-Day Fast, and it hasn't rained here in three years. For three years. If we don't have rain this year, our, our citizens are bankrupt. Our farmers are finished. This town's finished. They took me out, and they showed me the water reservoir, and it was like a lake. There was a dam at the end of the lake, but it was empty. There was, looked like a, a, a farm mud pond for cows, and it didn't even reach the dam. So we have to have rain, and we read your book. Do you think if we fasted and prayed, God sent rain? I said, well, I do, because God said that if we would humble ourselves, which is fast and pray and repent, he'd heal our land. And so they called for a fast in the Catholic Church, the Lutheran Church, the Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, the Church of God, and the Sioux Indian Reservation all came together on the first Thursday of May, which is a national day of prayer, and they fasted. They fasted and they repented of their sins. They, they asked God to send the rain. By the second Thursday of May, it began to rain. I'm not talking about a thunderstorm and lightnings, but it began a soaking rain, and it rained for the next seven days. That reservoir filled to overflowing. They later sent me, in August, a picture. It was on the front page of their paper of the harvest, the harvest that had broken every record. They showed the silos. The silos were running over. They, there was so much wheat that they had piled up. It was about halfway up to the silos. They had truck after truck after truck after truck. This is the most prosperous it's ever been. When I talk about fasting, I'm not just standing here and speaking to the wind. I'm talking to you about one of the greatest weapons that you can have and don't miss this opportunity. Don't pass it off lightly. Do you think if an army was coming towards me and I jumped up and, and, I, and I, I ran against that army, do you think I would have as much power and be victorious as if I ran against it 
with a thousand people. You fast by yourself. And then you compare that fasting with a body of believers. There's no comparison. I well, hope you enjoyed today's program and I want to pray for you. Some of you may want to try to fast and you think, well, I could never fast. You don't know what you can do until you try. And if you've never fasted before, fast until your evening meal. If you'll do that, and that's a, it's a, called a half fast in the Bible. They would fast until after evening prayer and evening prayer was at, at three o'clock. And so John Wesley, he said uh, to his ministers, I'll not ordain you unless you fast two days a week. And their days of fasting were Wednesday and Friday. Friday because that's the day Jesus was crucified and Wednesday because that was the time of his temptation. But they fasted until four o'clock. Four o'clock because he said evening prayers at three and so when you get through praying, you can eat. So that'll be about four o'clock. But God blessed them and God will bless you. Father, I loose an anointing to fast in the name of Jesus, amen. Before I leave the air, I want you to go to your website or get on your phone and call that number on the screen or, or dial in the website bobrogersministries.org and there's a place where you can get this book on a daily guide to miracles. I share about fasting. I share some of the great stories about fasting. I'm going to send it to you. So during this time of fasting, you can read it. It'll encourage you. It'll help you to fast in a greater measure. And it'll bless your life. So I want you to have it. It'll be a blessing. And then I ask you to send some type of generous gift. Your generous gift will help spread the gospel. And you'll get feeling good about yourself. I'm helping to change the world through my giving. That money's going to go to the Holy Land. I don't get any of that money, but it goes to the Holy Land to help spread the gospel. It's costing us right now about 25,000 a month. And so your gift will be a great blessing. God bless you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Dr. Bob Rogers continues his series of daily Bible devotionals in this second volume. The Word of God is as important to every believer as food and water. The Scripture is a light in dark places. It is this biblical food that causes us to mature spiritually. Pastor Rogers presents his love for the Word of God in daily devotional readings with practical applications. In this new volume, Dr. Rogers challenges his readers to pursue every blessing and victory that belongs to us as children of God. This 30-day devotional stems from his own dedicated and personal time of prayer and study of God's Word. For your best gift to the ministry, we will send this newly published book to you. Call 502-413-0155 to give or go to bobrogersministries.org to obtain your Guide to Miracles, Volume 2. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.